This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it, man, I know it, I know. Uh, I want to start from the beginning. There was a back and forth between Doug Polk and Daniel Negreanu this week. They were trying to settle uh, pretty much the terms of their bet. Mm -hmm. And initially, Daniel was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, you can use whatever. Uh, but then he was like, nah, no charts. He said, I don't care if we use RTA or we don't use RTA. I just want it to be clarified prior. Okay, that's that's way different than saying do whatever you want. Right, exactly. Yes. And that, that's kind of my point is that like now we're just really getting into the nitty gritty of like, if it's agreed upon that nobody wants to use RTA, which I wholeheartedly assume that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're really arguing the semantics of how close are preflop charts to RTA. And so I think like the whole conversation just like got lost there because they're just shouting at one another and, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are chiming in from the outside. Well, my, I'm going to make my stance relatively clear, and I think I'll speak for like Saul for Y as well. Like I think you'll agree with this, is that I believe that any outside assistance, whether it's charts, sheets, software, is RTA. And there was a kind of wonderful video done by Finding Equilibrium's channel that mm -hmm. I showed you that I think further exemplifies that that's just the case. I, I think he did a really eloquent job of explaining why it matters. I, I'm not going to go so far as to say it's RTA because I am in the camp with like pads and all those guys where it's like, if you're pretty studied having access to the chart versus like pulling from memory, it's not giving you that big of an edge. I also think that it's a little unfair to say that the chart isn't RTA because of someone studied is going to be close to it. Well, what, what, uh, like what premise does that set? For someone that's not studied, like is now is that is that okay? Now right. When so they I guess the reason why I, I, I'm being very pedantic about the terminology here, mm -hmm. uh, real time assistance to me is a very big deal, and it's uh, very sophisticated, right? It's it's having databases of solves to come through that like literally spit out a, a strategy that can't really right. The much connotation of, of real time assistance in poker today yeah. is effectively like you have a like a yeah, real time solver. Uh, effectively, what the 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 elites in the community are saying is that if you're bad at poker, take all the fucking charts you want. I don't care. Right. And I think that's, that's fair. Like I'll spot you the charts kind of thing. Right. It don't, doesn't matter if people start playing well preflop. It's a little bit dismissive though, because like in the live environment where we play a lot of the EV we, we gain is by the fact that people play very poorly pre mm -hmm. and then that compounds street by street by street by street. Correct. So they arrive at overfolds. Uh, they play too loosely in some spots. Truthfully, like almost every single player who is giving up EV in live is overfolding some street. I'm not saying that there isn't an edge to be had by playing a relatively bulletproof preflop strategy. I guess what I'm saying is that it's so readily available to all that um, it feels awkward to call it real-time assistance. Like it's not the same as a dynamic chart, okay. like uh, you know the dynamic range charts that you get for MTTs, mm -hmm. where it's updating every single time or every single hand based on your stack. I agree. I agree. Like okay, maybe the term is not the term that we want. Maybe yeah. we need a secondary term. Sure, sure. But okay, at the end of the day, it's outside assistance. Yes. Okay, I think that's fair. You know, you yeah. have outside assistance. Yep. I don't understand how you can get away with the contradiction of. I'm bum hunting to the degree where I'm going to back the truck up on this guy and then head off into the sunset again into retirement a lot richer by by beating this trash player, as he would refer to Negranu. But at the same time, also be like, uh, I don't really want to play this match without the ability to have my charge. Like, I put in work studying. Yeah. And I don't want you to undermine that. Yeah, I mean, the truth of the matter is that uh, we actually recorded a podcast yesterday. Mm. And... I woke up this morning and I was like, listen, I was like really hot. Like <laughs> you were spiced, man. I was super spiced because I, you know, the it was thing cathartic though, right? It felt good. It felt good to, to just get on the mic. And I mean, 
No one's going to see it now, but like it felt good to just go hard. I'm heated right now. You ain't coming back like 95 Jordan, all right? Like you're not coming back 95 Jordan where everybody loves you. You're wearing 45. Everybody's like, oh, Doug Punk. Oh. No, you're coming back like Wizards Jordan. You washed up. And, and you trying to, you trying to, nobody loves you. Look at Twitter. Like everybody, everybody's, everybody's turning the back on you. You ain't that big a deal, bro. I mean, look, um, he ends up calling you out, right? Yeah. He's like, oh, I heard Berkey's playing WSOP. Like, let me clear my schedule. Mm. And at that point I was like, enough's enough. Man. It's like, bro, yeah. like, what is the obsession? Like, I don't understand. And I was like, and then. I got pretty mad. Like he called me a coward and like that doesn't fly. Like at least to me, like those are like you're really getting close to like this isn't this is personal, you know? Yeah. Um, so whatever. I was like, all right, like we got into a little bit back and forth. And it continued through the day, like a, a little bit. It kind of died down. I think it died down a little bit when like I kind of like kind of put him in the coffin a little bit when I was like, I, I put a tweet with me playing. And I had a range chart, yeah, like that. Yeah. I and I wrote it down in a little, like a little paper, and I put it out there. And I was right, the King Nine suited. It's an open right there, you know. <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, is how is this how it works?" Like, but at the end of the day, like, I think what he's doing is like pretty childish and very attention grabbing, and it's fine. Like, but I think people need to see it for what it is. I've said this a hundred times, man. He's he's a smart businessman. Uh, he knows what drives the needle. He knows what gets clicks. And uh, to him, I think like these are all emotionless tweets. I truly think he like doesn't give a shit about anybody, Negranu included. Like I know it comes off that he genuinely hates Negranu. And I'm positive that Negranu genuinely hates Doug. But I truly don't think that like if if there wasn't anything to gain, like if Negranu wasn't ever going to play him heads up or Doug didn't get tweets out of it or, or sorry clicks out of it uh I, I just think he would have let it die but it's a cash cow for him it's like it already started with doug the first time we ignored it we literally let it go for like three months he made infinite videos about it and then finally it was like okay let's utilize our comedy team in pigtails let them clap back we hit him with the doug polk retired me a lot of self-deprecating humor it was funny it was good it was great right he got scared that happens sometimes berkey got shook when two grown men feud, it can get ugly. I've actually reached out to Doug, uh, waiting for a response, see what he's gonna say. I think he's a really great fit for a new uncle. He was using Berkey's own words against him, and honestly, some pretty sick top of the line graphics. I don't really know how he got his hands on that if he knows people at Pixar. He was in rough shape. Uh, we had to pull him out of bed, uh, teach him to walk again. Uh, he basically became a piece of shit. He wouldn't work out. Lost his taste for eggs. You know, ugh, I don't even want to talk about the piss cups. I asked him what they were, and he tells me they're piss. The past few weeks have taught me a lot about honor and courage, and how my aggressive, spewy style of play is clearly just me overcompensating for being a shell of a man off the felt. In light of the allegations from Live at the Bike, it's in my best interest to retire from poker. Now this is old hat. Yeah. There is just no response, right? You can't win because it's like, even though like I just view this as somebody who like has some sort of weird chip on his shoulder that just like dives in headfirst into bully culture, uh, it works. People fucking love him for it. You know, if you use the WWE analogy, uh, this would be what's like called a heel turn where he goes from like a babyface hero to the, the the heel. So like when he trashes people, the reason why it triggers me so much is because, not not because I, I care if he calls me a shit reg or Jason Mercy or a bad reg or anything like that. Like, I don't give a fuck. First of all, I've been playing high stakes on WSOP for five months, open sitting and playing whoever the fuck came along. He could have played at any point up until that time. I literally haven't been on the site for 60 days. Right. Right. And now all of a sudden, like there's a call out. And it's like, what happens when he's playing heads up and I go to join a three-way match? Is he going to sit the other guy out or is he going to like, you know, start a new table and try to, I don't want to play heads up. I've never once in the, in my life claimed to be a good heads up player. Right? So it's all just a bunch of like calculated moves to drive traffic, to keep himself relevant, to keep his name at the top of the search engines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it works. It works fantastic. It is what it is. Like, 
at the end of the day, like, it's pretty clear, like, I'm going to be rooting for Daniel. Like, I hope he does it. Like, he's, he's a huge dog, but, like, I hope he does it, man. Like, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I just wish, I honestly wish Daniel wouldn't have played. Like, I, I hate that he gave the platform back to Doug. But I get it, man. And Twitter loves it. And maybe it's great for the community. But it why do we think shitting sucks. on people is, like, the way to do it? It's, it's the fastest path to being the guy who carries the torch, right? The reason why Doug is the industry leader and the the guy of this secondary generation who seems to carry the torch to move forward is because he built the fucking brand, right? Mm -hmm. He did it all. It's all self-promotion. It's all self-aggrandizing. And yeah, he did it in ways that like don't fly with me, but it was way more fucking successful than keeping your chin up and patting everybody on the back that you passed or that was passing you along the way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's this hardcore winner take all, never say die mentality. And like to some degree, I do respect that aspect of it. I just hate the fact that like it's a step on somebody's neck along the way kind of approach. Yeah, you know, it's just not how I roll. Man. This is what I'm getting at though. It's like, we've been at this for a long fucking time. There are some of us that have been playing, you know, closer to two decades. And a lot of us have been playing a decade plus. Yeah. If you have a relative amount of success to the point where you've built up uh, a platform, you've built up wealth, you've built up uh, some security in your your life, your game, and everything else, I respect the fuck out of that. Yeah, you know, and I respect the fuck out of everybody who tried along the way, failed, and ended up moving on to something else. So it's just like I don't get, yeah, the shaming element of, uh, you know, trying to tear down anybody with any sort of eyes. On I'm glad we aired it out. I'm sure there's a couple laughs along the way with whatever they inserted, whatever like the comedic <laughs> team inserted. I'm gonna be fucking honest real quick. Like this show gets edited, but I don't want nobody to fucking edit me today. Real talk. People would have got smacked up where I grew up with, with this kind of character. Like this kind of like double speak is not is not real. Like it's not man shit. Oh, I've never had a problem with Berkey. Nah, we're cool. You know what else I don't like? Don't meet me on Twitter. Don't meet me on YouTube. Last thing I knew, you all your fucking channels that were in poker failed. I heard that Berkey plays high stakes WSOP. I'm gonna clear my schedule. I'm the supreme leader. He's retired. We're not friends. Don't shake my hand. Don't say what's up. Don't say anything. Just tell me if, if, if it's hands. That's all I want to know. I'm not going on your podcast so you can fucking tell me, oh, I never had a problem with you. There's no more words that need to be spoken. I ain't about that. I ain't about that bullshit life. I get it. I'm on your side. He's a much bigger name than I am, right? If he gets into a tic tac war with me, like he always looks bad. I'm just a kid with a dream. Insecure, attention whore. I picked up like 200 followers today. See, you're too classy. Don't That's the care. Problem. No, like it. it's not okay. Like, it's just not okay. I'll fucking do it. And I'm excited to watch the Daniel Negreanu and Doug Polk match and November 1st. Yeah. Man, please, Daniel.